In our next couple of examples, we're given a geometric sequence and we just want to find the next three terms. So if I take a look at example three here, to find the common ratio, I'm going to, I'm going to divide two consecutive terms. So I'm going to take negative four and I'm going to divide by one. I'll take the second term divided by the first term. Notice since my R is negative, see how in the sequence it goes positive, negative, positive, negative? That tells you your R is going to be a negative number. So to find my next three terms, I'm going to take negative 64 times negative 4. A negative times a negative is a positive. I think we'll use a calculator here. We'll take 64. Whoops, that's not what I want. I want the calculator. Calculator, sorry about that. So if I take 64 times 4, I'm going to get 256. Then I'll take 256 times negative 4. My answer will be negative, because a positive times a negative is a negative. So then I'm going to multiply that answer times negative 4. I think I'll do that. And we get negative 1,024. To find the third term, we take negative 1,024 times negative 4. And we'll do that. And we get 4,096. Now you can generate this sequence on your calculator. Show you how, how that works. So if I take my calculator, keep sorry, keep on going to the wrong one. I want the calculator. Here we go. You type in your first term, which is one, and you press enter. Then we're, take, we're going to type in answer times our common ratio times negative four, and we get negative four. Now if you press enter, now just press enter again. There is your third term, your fourth term. There's our three terms we have, 256, negative 1,024, and 4,000. Uh, 96. That's using the answer button on your calculator. Now let's take a look at example four. This one's a little weird one because notice it's getting smaller, isn't it? So to find my common ratio, I take three divided by nine. I could have taken one divided by three. It would have been easier, I guess. So my common ratio was one third. And it's kind of confusing because your last term you're given is one third. So our next term is one-third times one-third. I don't want a decimal because it gave me as a fraction, so my answer is one-ninth. And then I take one-ninth times one-third, and that's one-twenty-seventh. I take one-twenty-seventh times one-third, and that's one over 81. There are your next three terms. It's just really doing one over the geometric sequence, isn't it? Now, we can write a geometric sequence in explicit form. To find, to write the function in explicit form, we're going to say a sub n, the nth term of your sequence, equals your first term times your common ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. 